Hello everyone, I am Lord Welshie and welcome back to the Mini Box. We've got two more models to open up for you today from the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures range. This time it's the female Dragonborn Fighters. Let's take a look. These are the female Dragonborn Fighters from the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures range. Uh, and as is typical for this range, they are primed and ready to paint out of the box. Uh, so let's open these up and take a quick look. So these will just slide out of the pack. There we are. So, the standard two small black plastic bases for them, as we have come to expect with the character models. So we're going to take a look at this top one first. Put her sister off to the side. Now this is, as we found with the male ones last week, very, very nice, just initial impressions of it. I do like how uh, this model has been kind of designed um, to be quite uh, a, a, a moving, uh, in motion character. Good sense of uh, definite striding forward, ready to attack. Now what I like with this one, you can see, as we found with the, uh, the Asimar uh, when we looked at those a couple of weeks ago, the weapon is this clear, uh, semi-clear, kind of opaque plastic uh, which is a different material to the rest of the model. That makes that stand out very nicely. Now it seems that they do use this for kind of magical or divine effects on their models, uh, which I think works really, really well. Definitely gives it a, a very nice kind of character and flavour to it. Looks uh, certainly suitably powerful as if it's uh, doing something out of the ordinary that you wouldn't expect. The way the cloak here is billowing upwards, there's a definite sense of purpose and speed to the stride forward. This uh, left, uh, this right arm that is kind of uh, moving ahead mid-stride, kind of uh, the left one reeling back for the attack. That looks very nice. Good level of detail on it, as we found with the cloak on the male Dragonborn um, fighters. You've got these kind of nice ridges to give a good level of uh, kind of detail when you're doing your painting, whether you want to do your dry brush, your highlighting, or a wash to get into these recesses and really give it a good shade kind of effect as well. Um, the art detail on the armour is quite nice. Um, you've got the kind of the breastplate here on the plate armour. Um, this kind of part of the traveller's cloak underneath coming down, which is nice. Um, Good bit of detail on the gauntlet here, you can see kind of the separate plating in the armour uh, and with the pauldrons, good level of detail on uh, the raised sections. Again, should allow for some nice painting effects on there. On the whole, I really do like this, looks very, very nice. Uh, and let's take a look at her sister, the second Dragonborn fighter. So this is the second of the Dragonborn female fighter models. Pop that to the side and Again, that looks very, very nice. Now this one is dual wielding hand axes. That is very, very cool. Um, her left leg, her left foot is planted firmly on this rock as if she's about to kind of leap forward into this vicious attack, um, which works very, very nicely for a fighter, I think. Um, Again, the level of detail on this one, as we've found with a lot of these Nolz as Marvelous Miniatures, very good. Uh, you've got enough of the effect to kind of the, I think that might be chainmail or uh, underneath. Um, that should pick out quite nicely any kind of metal colouring um, for the model. Uh, if you've got the uh, plate armour on the front, uh, which kind of comes around to the back and you do have the strap. Uh, kind of across the shoulder if you want to get the leather paint uh, colour in there as well. Um, I like that she's got the greaves uh, on the front, um, kind of the knee armour, the shin armour, and again we'll see if that comes up. The buckles and the straps down the side here. Um, I don't see any major issues with the model itself. As we always find, a couple of little mould lines that may need a little bit of cleaning up um, but nothing too drastic. This shouldn't pose any particular challenge um, for any kind of uh, modelers or painters out there, I don't think. Um, 
there's enough kind of wide surfaces to get a good level of paint on there but there's also enough detail to get some finer work done as well so very very nice what I did forget to mention before I opened the miniatures, um, as is typical for the Nulls as Marvelous miniatures, on the back you have examples of the colour schemes that you can use uh, to give you an idea of what the miniatures could look like once they're painted. And you can see the flaming sword effect, which is that clear plastic we have on that first one that we opened. Um, so whether you want to paint that with uh, like a yellow or an orange wash, um, or just a nice flaming effect, I think that's probably something that would give me the most trouble just to cr try and keep that clear plastic without drowning it out in colour. Uh, but that certainly is something that I think looks very, very good in these models. Now, comparing the female Dragonborn fighters to the male Dragonborn fighters that we opened up in last week's video, I think comparatively they look very good next to each other. Um, what I think is interesting to note is the male uh, fighters do look a little bit bulkier, a little bit heftier than their female counterparts, which I think is intended to try and set them apart. Um, the female models, I think, typically do have a little bit more of a, a thinner, kind of svelte look to them to try and give them this more feminine characteristic, which for something draconic, I think is quite difficult to achieve in other ways. Um, but I think the effect works quite well. They don't look any weaker, necessarily, than the male versions. I still think they look like powerful, strong characters, and they fit quite nicely in the range. Um, but I, th I do think that the differences to tell them apart are kind of suitable for what you'd expect from these miniatures. So those were the female Dragonborn fighters. Really, really nice models, just like the male ones that we saw last week. Really good level of detail on them. But again, how do they compare to the player's handbook entry for the Dragonborn? Let's take a look. In the player's handbook, if we turn to the page for the playable race for the Dragonborn, uh, as we did last week, a quick comparison to the appearance uh, of Dragonborn characters to the miniatures themselves. Um, I won't go into it in, as in-depth as last week just because I think a lot of the uh, kind of information holds true. Um, they do look suitably draconic, they do look like they have this dragon blood running through their veins. Um, they look like they'd be quite proud dragon kin. You kind of get this feeling of uh, a sense of purpose and uh, there's no kind of hesitation to the stride on them or their poses. They're definitely uh, quite purposeful in what they're doing. Um, again, comparing them to uh, a human-sized character like the Asima uh, we looked at previously, uh, because these are about the same height as the male Dragonborn, um, you again get this feeling that they are a good amount taller, quite uh, large, hefty creatures compared to uh, human-sized uh, characters and creatures within the world of Dungeons & Dragons, so I think that fits very well. They are described as being six and a half feet tall, up to 300 pounds, um, strong hands and feet, talon-like claws, um, with uh, three fingers and a thumb on each hand, which I think, actually, yes! I hadn't noticed this before. Um, wait for that to focus, if it will. Three fingers! Look at that! And a thumb! Outstanding! Attention to detail, gotta love it! <laughs> Just little, little details like that, very cool. So that fits very, very well, um, and I do like those Dragonborn miniatures, I think they're fantastic. Those are the Dragonborn female fighters. Again, as we found with the male Dragonborn fighters we looked at last week, really, really nice models. The extra size of them compared to the human-sized characters allows for this level of detail that should make them a bit easier to paint, um, and they just look absolutely brilliant. Again, as I said last week, five pounds for those two models, especially if you want to play a Dragonborn character or just want to add to your collection of miniatures, 100% I recommend them. Definitely get them. This has been the Mini Box, and thank you for watching. Thank you.